This thing is like they discovered have silent here. Hello everyone, Tim here from Tim's Gym and Way of the Rope and I am currently with David Weck. The main man David Weck, you will probably know him if you don't right by now. He's the founder of Weck Method and the creator of many of my favorite uh, biomechanical inventions. So I thought we'd go through it chronologically um, with David and take it away. What was your first Okay, so uh, 1999, I conceived of the idea of the BOSU ball. So I was standing on a large ball, fell off it, recognized that the risk was starting to it's outweigh the like reward. That. So? And that's one night I thought, what if I cut the ball in half? Boom! What if I cut the ball in half? Oh my, I've never seen that. They sell millions of balls. We're gonna sell millions of these and it'll be here forever. So what I did was the night after I conceived of it, I went to the hardware store, cut a ball in half, got a wooden platform, staples glue. I built the very first prototype, sold them to the US ski team, the Yankees, the Lakers, the Devons, the Rams. All the championship teams made hundreds of these things, took six hours to build each one wow. while I was getting the manufacturing going and I got the patent. So, uh, patent pending October 4, 1999. Somewhere on there. It's somewhere the on there, it's patent pending. <laughs> yeah. um, so October 4th, I'm patent pending. This is 1999. October 14th, I made my first sale to the U.S. ski team, and I became an official supplier to the U.S. ski team. Nice. And so, what, what was it that it did for them? Well, basically, it's just this incredible versatility. And male skiers back in that day and now, the female skiers, every single one of them has had a knee injury. So when I'm able to do different movements with no risk and impact and just get that the knee and the foot to cooperate. So I'm like, wow, it doesn't matter what happens. I've got fortified tissue and nervous system intelligence so that I'm not overreacting to imbalance to send me off. I'm doing what's appropriate to maintain the balance. Core exercises, there's just a ton of stuff to do. And Move. the BOSU ball yeah. started from the name both sides up. Because I can do it on this side, yep. and I can do it on the other side. And what happened was, and this is leading to the next inventions. I, I just want to quit it. What was the, I heard, first time I ever heard, oh, what was the original name for the BOSU? It was called the Balance Turtle at first. <laughs> I've right? never heard that one until today. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get the trademark, so I changed it to BOSU, and thank goodness yeah. I did. Right? Yeah, Balance so, Turtle, I like it. So what happened was, I met a man named Dean Brittenham, who mm. was, he was a trainer. His son was the strength coach for the New York Knicks, and I sold BOSU balls to New York Knicks, and Greg Brittenham's like, you have to meet my father. He's in San Diego, Dean Brittenham, elite athletic performance, and he was into whole brain. Back then. So yeah, yeah, back then. Yeah. So this was back when like, you know, doing coordinative exercises between the hands. Mm. One of them was like juggling, right? If you can mm. learn to do this, now you're operating with this harmony in the brain unlocking greater potential. Yeah. And so what I did was I changed both sides up to both sides utilized. So now both sides utilized still describes the invention of the BOSU ball, but it's about the strategy for living. It's both sides utilized. Mm -hmm. I want to know hard. I want to know soft. I want to know fast. I want to know slow. And by training polarities, you get everything in between. Yes. So this both sides yeah. utilized. The hands have so much real estate in the motor sensory cortices yep. that they're so smart. So when we organize the hands, and what I did was I was doing this stick manipulation. The stick is the same stimulus. And now if you notice, I'm doing this pronation, supination, this far steering elbow, near steering elbow. And then I can do stuff like this where I'm turning it, right? And I'm moving it in the figure eights. And so I got very, very good with this. And I would do stuff like this this so i want to keep that contact mm. so that i'm learning how to use my arms and keep them sticky and this was just such a a useful base that my next invention after the bosu ball was what i call the quick hands bola trainer it's two you know spongy balls connected by elastic and now this thing is like the ultimate coordination cat tool any angle, very fast, right? I can do stuff where this thing will come in more than 100 miles an hour if I want. And then I have this sort of like the poi aspect of it where I'm doing 
this kind of stuff here, mm. right? This would equate to what they call poi. Well, they light these things on fire and they do that. And then I would come here and learn how to turn it, right? Yeah. But it didn't take off because it's just a learning skill that the kids don't have time for today. I believe that if Duncan had launched his yoga, yo-yo, not back then, but now he failed. There's not enough attention span and skills. Mm. Nah, nah, I want an electronic game. So anyway, this, with the success of our other products, this will probably come back because then we'll have a platform and a trust that if we say it's helpful, mm. you're gonna have felt that and you're gonna know that. I like that as a tool. Like you say, big cat tool to look, just practice. Well, this is a cat toy. Like cats love like catching and chasing Yeah, like, you know, and, and just the, like, I don't know if I'll still do the move now, but you go boom, boom. Ah, Swap hands. Oh, right, cool. like you can, you can make this thing like snap, snap, and change. Yeah, yeah. I'm out of practice cool. with it. Cool, all good, yeah. But anyway, so now, 2004, I meet Buddy Lee, one of the best jump ropers in the world. We're both presenting in New York City at a conference. I saw his performance, and what I noticed was the ropes going everywhere, and he's jumping through it, but not every rep. And so what I did was I said, all right, I'm gonna remove the jump through the rope entirely. I'm just gonna get rid of it for 30 days. I'm gonna train as hard as I can with the rope to get really good. Mm. And what happened was four fundamental patterns emerge. I have an underhand pattern, right? Yeah. 180 degrees is an overhand pattern. See this, the figure eights are going leading by the thumb, it's overhand. And as soon as I come here, it's underhand. Yep. And then this one's really cool. This is called the dragon roll. Right? We just recently discovered, Tim, that the dragon roll is the perfect force sequencing and motor engram for the golf drive. <laughs> okay? mm. And then the last move is the sneak. So with the sneak, what we're doing is we're bringing it behind the back like this. And then if I want to go underhand, it's this. Right? I'm getting that whipping action. Mm. And once you get proficiency with this, Go wireless. Your body's 100% integrated. You know that your hand is connected to the ground at all times. And there's no slack in the system. It's fluid, all right? Figure eights are fast and powerful, whereas stop and go is not fast and powerful. Yep. It's a lot of energy, <laughs> whereas foom, foom, right? Yep. So now, let's move on to the ballast ball. So this ball has a weight inside of it that basically keeps it in the position right there. So what I can do with it when I have it here is I can come here and I can come here and it's there for me, for example. Yeah. What had happened was I trained a teenager here in San Diego who had had a brain tumor as an infant and it was 17 brain operations to remove the tumor and then try to repair the damage from that removal. And he came to me and he couldn't walk. And so what I did, one of the things I did, was I took a ball and I filled it with a lot of weight so it couldn't move at all. It only had like that much movement. And I had him learn how to sit to stand, find the balance. Now control it and sit. You can bounce and control. Just get used to landing your weight vertical and we did thousands of reps, thousands of reps and then we worked on a staircase he ended up living abroad, okay? China and Italy, I think. And then he climbed Mount Whitney. <laughs> I mean, this was an amazing success story and that's what inspired wow. the idea for the ballast ball. I like that story, I've not right? heard that story. That's really yeah, it's cool. a good story. All right, so now the propulsors, I gotta come off camera and go get them, but- Stay on camera, just show the living space. <laughs> yeah, there you, you go. Lunch Lunchtime. Yeah. So this right here, Okay, in 2010, I discovered a positioning with the fingers to create what I call a core fist. So what I'm doing is rather than putting the fist in this position where that digit right there is vulnerable and weak, what I'm doing is I'm, boom, I'm creating a triangle. So now the force is going through the bone yep. longitudinally, it's not getting stuck in failing yep. the joint. Makes sense. So I, I got that, I felt it, I went to Chinese medical school, started doing all this meridian stuff and that's what led to this. But once I felt this, I realized like, boom, I can hit down to go up. 
And it's faster, it's more powerful, feels better, mm. <laughs> less pain, more joy, better performance. That was 2010. And I taught a whole bunch of athletes, but it was a lot of training. They had to be highly committed to learning it. So that's like with the fascial integration, with the connective tissue, like that's yeah. the, re so, the recoil. So what happens when I set up this position, the force of flexion gets routed bone circuit to the extensor side. So now I have this, this balance of strength inside and out where more tension here equals more fluidity in the shoulder. So we've literally just flipped the script because we all know that tension here is clunky. Yeah. That's slow. When you get it here, we flip the script. So more tension is actually better, right? So in training, if the body has been there, it's easier to get back there. So if you know how to use your fingers and your hand as a tool, to create more proximal fluidity and motion and ease. Mm -hmm. All right, well now my body just felt what that feels like. Okay, and then how did this lead to the... Okay, so courses? this here, as soon as I did that, I was like, Deion Sanders, <laughs> that's yeah. Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders holds his hands like that, that's a tensional balance, and he's going bing, bing, bing with the football, right? Bing, 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 he's doing it. Then I start looking at a lot of athletes, they're all doing it. In one form or another, they're hitting down to go up, and it only makes sense. If I swing up, up, I have to wait until I'm there. But if I hit down, I get a jolt when that foot's on the ground. So, went to the swap meet. This is 2017, okay? I find these weights, they're solid, and I start jumping around, or running around the swap meet with these two pound weights, and I'm feeling like, Whoa, that's a lot more force. But the problem is it's slow and the inertia was very taxing on the muscles and tendons. So, my RMT club, I will put that one in, I forgot yeah, that. Yeah, we can go So, that But the RMT club has a shifting weight. So what I did was I said, all right, well, I'm not gonna use a solid weight for the hands, for the pulsers. I'm gonna use a shifting weight. And what the shifting weight does is it creates, it creates this jolt effect mm. where I've eliminated the inertia of a solid weight. So when this is going down, the weight's at the top. And when I stop, there's no resistance because the container weighs practically nothing. And then a millisecond after I have stopped it, then the weight hits. So it's like no weight, right? And solid weight, pulser weight, bam, bam, bam. Mm. So we're getting that effect. It both teaches you the technique for how to do it, and it builds the tissue. There's a physiological yeah, training response to this with. stimulus. Yeah. So now I'm building the tendons and the bing, that springy force, yep. okay? This one, I mean, this is so revolutionary. And then the weight of it is much less than what you need to carry, like yes. you say, because it's, it's exponential almost. Yes, like. correct. The 12 ounces, I mean, mm, that could have spiked to 30 pounds yeah. for a millisecond. Yeah. And then it goes away. So yeah. that means the boom. So the you carry more weight because of the clever of the, the physics of it, the genius of the design, you're carrying more weight than it's than you're actually carrying. Or you're yeah, yeah. Well, you're, you're more spiking weight. more force yeah. than the burden of carrying Yeah, these. which is beautiful. And every single athlete that we have ever trained, we bring them to the staircase and they run stairs faster and easier with yeah. them than without them. We have the video evidence. We're gonna go that we're gonna go there today as Yeah, well. we're gonna go do that. Yeah. All right. So now these are revolutionary and then we can go back, we can go back to the Yeah, we'll clubs. go back to the RMT club. Yeah. So RMT club this is the idea of the physics, right? This is yeah. where you get... So what happened is I started collecting Indian clubs. Okay, so what happened was the British went to India and the Indian or the India people, they had these wrestlers using these like big clubs and they're doing this stuff. And the British civilized it and made little one pounders and they did, you know, their little patterns, <laughs> right? And it's great, right? But hence the title was called Indian clubs. And I was a collector, I had every size, I had antiques, I had a whole bunch, right? And I, it, I didn't have the one that I wanted. And so I invented it because I was like, if I have that shifting weight, now I have this percussive effect that's giving me that, again, that open chain upper body plyometric. It's a category that didn't even exist before shifting weight. 
And the shifting weight can be used strategically to be silent, right? I can use the sound to do different things with it. I can actually like fail <laughs> and do this with a metal mason, do this with a wooden yeah. club, right? Do that, I don't think you're gonna like it so much. But this, it's just, it's the fastest swinging club on planet Earth. You can move this thing with more speed than any other club with the safety, right? So you can get this thing cranking and flying and there's so many, like, it's just so fundamental. Think about it, the ancient ancestors, how early was the club incorporated into life? Sticks, stones, and ropes. Here we go, this is a stick. Mm. So this thing here, again, it inspired the, the, the propulsor with that shifting weight. Yeah, Right. clever. It's just an amazing tool. Mm. So, we'll fast forward a little bit yeah. and we get to... So when was the club? Do you know what year that was? I think I invented that in 2012, 12, okay. I think. Cool. And then we got it out to the market in 2014, like, I cool. think. And they're really popular in like the baseball crowd. Oh yeah, golf and baseball. Golf and baseball, yeah. We were voted, RMT Club was voted the you know number one golf training tool by Golf Digest like four years in a row. Wow, nice. You know what I mean? Like cool. And get, so the, when did the pulsers come after that then? Pulsers were 2017. 2017. Yeah, prototype pulsers. Nice. And then yep. what's coming next? We got. Okay, so let me tell you about Soul Steps because Soul Steps, this the is Wex Steps. I like the name Wex. Yeah, Wex Steps, right? But we steps. changed it. Yeah. Whatever. It makes sense. Yeah. So with this right here. What I discovered from training with the BOSU ball for all these years was that if I find a sweet spot on the dome where my toes are back, so I'm not perfectly on the top, I move it back right here. What this does is this puts my foot in an orientation where that's the highest, that's the second highest, that's the third highest, and that's the lowest. Yep. Now that is what I captured in a soul step. And it's patented. That ratio of support is patented. So what I did was I basically isolated out this incredible sweet spot and made it just a stable, consistent thing that allows me to go to the inside without danger, without collapse. So right here, I'm in a position right here that if I don't have the soul step, I'm moving. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So right now, I'm cocking the spring. I keep all four points on the foot down. Now I'm cocking the spring here, and I'm getting to that no slack through the ankle and the foot so that now when I go, I go, right? I, I say, because for, for, for me to give my explanation of it, because I think David gives a great explanation, but to cover all bases, from like just playing with it, I just feel like I can connect with my, the, the ball of my big toe. Yeah. I find much more connection. It, yes. it teaches my body, it goes, yes. oh, there's power to be had here. Correct. That when I'm just on the flat four, I, I'm not aware of it, but this gave me the awareness of the power through the, big, the ball of the big foot yep. that I can then, when I'm on the floor, my body kind of knows to seek for that now. Yes, correct. Is, is that? Well, I have, a, I have a brother, eight, a uh, year and a half younger than me. He's extremely successful and extremely smart. And I brought soul steps to him. David, I like these. I feel better and it's simple. <laughs> so basically just being on this. So Chris Chamberlain, who is the director of programming at WEC Method, he had a hip injury from football that dated back 20 years. Mm. When his child was young, his little boy, he'd rock him to sleep here on soul steps. And this little figure eight here, just doing that to put his kid to sleep, it fixed his hip. He mm. no longer has that issue that was sort of stuck in him. Yeah. So when you, when you change the, the nature of your lower extremity support, you have a profound influence everywhere else in the body. Yeah. And what this does is this puts you in this patented pitch that lets you put weight forward, less committed to the heel. You no longer need your heel, which means you have access to your heel whenever you want it. And I can do them downhill too. So I can come here and now it's like Olympic weightlifting shoes that have that lateral bias mm. where the inside's higher than the outside. 
and I now get this full foot support where my body knows what that feels like. And then in motion on the ground, I can capture that same sequencing and mechanics yeah. that I'm not, I'm not coming in and pronating early. The fundamental, and credit to Ben Patrick out there, knees over toes guy, because safety, as I define it for your knee, is in relation to the foot. If I'm in front of the toe, a blow does not finish me. I will spin out of that and that'll be okay. As soon as I'm behind the toes mm. with the knee, yeah. that gets hurt. Because of the kind of point of contact pivot well, it's, point. You, you, I, right here, I I've captured it. I can see it clearly. Right? So I've I don't captured know. it. But as soon as I'm past, you see? So yeah. if my knee is in front of my toe, inside, outside don't matter suddenly. Like this, like that's easy. That's mm. no problem whatsoever. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, if I'm a wide receiver or playing basketball and I want to go that way, I better know how to do that. And if I'm going to do a crossover in basketball, I'm going to come here. I might even Kobe and Michael. <laughs> Alan Iverson, I might drag that foot to pull me back to the other side, hmm. right? Nice. And then that kind of led to this, right? Because this is kind of the evolution or... Yeah, this or, right here... It's even here. more simple, but it's the same thing. Well, this right here, we've got two rights here. Okay. But this here, <laughs> this is exactly the same as this. It's just a bigger platform. But, but our working surface, so that's exactly the same pitch. Yeah. And the working surface here is huge, so I've got you know, all sorts of placement. It's, it's just fantastic for training. For lifting on and stuff, yeah. right? Mate? And these are the XL soft steps that we make for NBA is what oh, yeah. inspired the NBA strength coach. Like, can, can you make some for our athletes? Yeah. Yeah, we can. <laughs> right. So nice. I get, uh, I love getting a text message from like the Texas Rangers. Hey, can you overnight five sets of soul steps? The players are absolutely in love with it yeah wicked. right nice. <laughs> that's, right. that's cool. a good thing so that and then, and then um, another invention that we're going to do another episode on is called the i think it's my new bosu ball in terms of how fast it's going to be adopted and how universally it will be accepted in athletics an advantage equals a necessity Zero learning Every curve. Every step stronger. Every step stronger. Zero learning curve. It's going to do what it does, and you're faster. It's a brand new plyometric, never okay. been done before. I've been told to keep this one on the low key, so we'll, we'll stop <laughs> there. All right, yeah. Keep tuning on David's Instagram for when that's actually out. It'll be out soon, though. Um, yes. So In prototype form. Hey, everyone. Tim here from the future with a very quick message just to interrupt the video. If you are enjoying it so far, and you like seeing what David's invented, and you want to give this stuff a go yourself, well, I've got an affiliate link down below for WEC Method in America and new, as of very recently, there is now a European distributor for WEC Method and I have an affiliate link for them as well. So if you're in Europe like me and you wanted to try the Soul Steps, the Pro Pulse or something like that, there is a WEC Method EU distributor. Link down below if you want to check that out. Back to you, David. Oh, oh I forgot the hybrid rope. No, that's what we can do next. Okay, I think great. that was... All right, that so next. perfect transition. So this is, that's like... Up until this is this year, this year now almost right. Well, the invention, the inv this invention came, I think in like nineteen or something okay. like that. It took a long time to get it off the ground. Yeah. Because this one's a this one is a so basically here's what it is. It's called the hybrid rope, and the innovation is that we have this stretchable elastic to a limit length, and yeah. we can adjust this elastic to put the lighter elastic on mm. and put a different center cord that's either longer or shorter mm. and then click i can do the same thing at the handle to take it off and put it on yep. extremely simple and click and now i'll use the heavier elastic rather than the lighter elastics but that's why it's a hybrid you can set it up specific to what you want and with this just the simplicity, right, of just doing this. So now I have a centrifugal force that is making me fast like a speed rope, strong like a heavy rope, all at once. <laughs> Usually it's oil and water, right? What you gonna train today? This 
fast and strong. Yeah. Speed rope, heavy rope. And all you can in jump one. it, right? That's what. Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. That's, that's you the, can, the hybridness you can, is that it's rope flow and jump yes, rope. Yes, exactly. That's another way to say hybrid, right? Yeah. And, that's so, what, and then this here, this is like the ultimate jump rope trainer mm. because just to look at how short it's it short, is. Short, yeah. But it's your job. To make it here exactly yeah i love it when i tried it i was like oh this, cool yeah this represents stronger mm, yeah. <laughs> trust me when i say you do double unders with this and you get to 50 double unders with this mm. get to 100 double unders with this you crossfit three two one go <laughs> you ain't gonna be thinking double no more because when yeah. you put a real speed rope in your hand you're yeah. going for triples. Triples, now. yeah. That's right. Who Definitely. don't want triples? Yeah. <laughs> so this is yeah. imminent. The, the, the product will be arriving any day. We're going to have a big launch for it. It's probably, probably realistically, it'll be that New Year big launch. Yeah. Like soft launch until New Year. Cool. But again, what happened to me is I'm the lucky little mouse who got put in a bucket of cream, and I churned and I churned and churned, and I made butter. The Bosu ball has been so successful and helped so many people enhance the quality of their life, whether it's rehabilitation or performance, that that success gave me the wherewithal to devote 50,000 hours. I, I don't know. Just <laughs> Tim will tell you how intense I am and sort of the, the way that I operate. Like, I don't turn it off, right? <laughs> That's it. It doesn't turn it off. And so I'm constantly yeah. inventing, and my athletic inadequacy is my superpower because it is the ultimate motivation for me to operate my body with absolute perfect precision. Mm. I can hover where I'm here, and I get to change my weight anytime I want. <laughs> Athletically speaking, if I had this when I was a kid and playing college football, I mean, good grief. <laughs> good grief. All right, man. Thanks for that, David. That was yeah. a really nice rundown. Thank you Bringing so much, Tim. It. Yeah. Um, thanks, you guys, for watching. I hope you learned something from them because I just think, yeah, I think more people that understand David's stuff, sometimes the more you watch it, the more you seem to get each time and the way David shares it like, can differ each time. And I, even me, and just hearing you explain the stuff I took yeah. away then that I didn't take away from Beautiful. the 10 times before Beautiful. that I've heard you say. And Tim does way of the rope. Mm -hmm. And rope flow is a, it's a movement that's now sweeping the globe and yeah. it's gentle enough for anyone. You could have bad knees and do it because mm -hmm. you're not having to jump up and down or you can make it as intense as jumping rope, doing jump switches where you're not jumping through. Not jumping through means you have to rotate. So I want every rep to count and I'd rather be learning how to rotate than just do that. Me yeah. personally. Yeah. Right? It's I'm not that you. that's bad and a lot no. of people want to do it and you want to do it better. Well, then the hybrid rope is the key. <laughs> yeah. So we got Way the Rope, WEC Method. Check out their stuff. Yeah. I think we're going to go play now though, right? Let's, uh, oh, yeah. We're going all around San Diego. Yeah. We'll capture more footage for you. Yes, we will. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone.